going to be playing around with my hat heat press today and I'm going to be using this to make a St. Pat's gnome hat and it's done in three layers as you can see right here. And there's only a few supplies you need for this particular one. This is a hat press but if you don't have a hat press you can use your mini press and it will do the same thing. It includes a little heat pad a Cricut blank and of course asset number 422 and how you're going to put all of this together. And the hat press and the hat blank and weeding tool and some transfer tape and you are good to go. So we're going to load up our template right now and let's get over here to design space. <clears throat> Click on done here. We have three little gnomes that we're going to be adding to our canvas and they are simply called SVGM Patrick Gnomes 3, 2, and 1. So I'm just going to add each of these to the canvas and then I'm going to view my canvas. Okay, they should be loaded on your screen right now all three of these. Now the easiest way to handle all of this is of course is to break them apart and use them the way you want. So what I generally do is I ungroup everything. I don't want you to move them around because we're going to need them in place. Ungroup them. Now I think that's probably where we want to have them spread apart. That is great. So what the first thing I want to do is I want the noses and the black feet and the hands and that is what we want to select. So I'm going to grab the feet to start. I'm going to hold down the shift key, grab all the feet and then I'm going to grab the hands well, first of all, let's just group the feet together and then I can work on the hands. There's one holding down the shift key. I'm going to go through and I'm going to pick on each one of those items one at a time. Great. I'm going to group those together and then I'm going to also select the feet and I am going to group those together and then I am going to attach them. Now they all turn green but I want them to remain black so I'm going to change the color to black. There we go. It looks like I got a bit of a bottom piece here. Let's see if I can find it in my list here. There's my group. There's that bottom piece. Now I want to take that out of the group Grab this one and now let's just grab that one and pull it up here. I'm going to take it outside of the group. I'm going to take it outside of the attach. So let me just bring it all the way up to the top. Now that's going to be by itself. Now I should be able to change that to the green. Oh, it didn't allow it. Okay, so let me go back. I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to change him to green. There we go. All right, and I have the rest is attached just like that. All right, I am going to pull these down and out of the way. And it looks like we missed a couple of feet. So let me just go back. This is going to be a constant thing as you go through some of this stuff. Now I want these feet down at the bottom. Let's see if we can find where those feet are. That looks like one. And shift click. That looks like the other. And then I am going to shift and click the group. I'm going to group those and I'm going to make sure they are attached again. There's sometimes just a little process as you go through. I'm going to pull those down. Now the next one is I want the beard and the top of the hat. So I'm going to click, shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click, shift 
quick. Now that should be all the gray pieces. And I don't want that one, but it looks like we're missing one of these. So I'm going to hold down the shift key. Make sure I've got all of those pieces. So now we have all of the white parts selected. I'm going to group them and then I'm going to attach them and they will be cut out separately. So I'm just going to move those aside. Now you'll also notice that there is some white here and there is another piece here which is the shamrock. Well I am going to delete the shamrock because that will bring the color of the hat through. <clears throat> now this piece is interesting because it has little squares, it has little cutouts, it's really intricate and I don't want it to be so intricate so we're going to click on contour here and you're going to see all the different pieces and parts that go through here. If I hide all contours, let's just take a look and see what we get. And we just get something that's really, really unusual. So what I want to do is I want to actually replace this hat with something else. Let me just grab all of this together. Have I got the whole thing? <clears throat> Let's come up here to Offset. You can barely see it here. Okay, I'm going to move that Offset down. So it's really close to what it is now. Not quite zero. I'm going to apply it. That looks fantastic. Okay, I'm just going to click away. I'm going to take this green part, take this white part out, and delete it. Now I have a green part in here. I'm going to pull that out and delete it. And you'll notice there's a little bit of a hole here. So if I click on this, I can come back here to contour. I should be able to hide all contours. And now it's completely black. Now it's slightly bigger than it was before, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to change it to green. Now I have all the green pieces that I'm looking for. So I'm just going to highlight all of those. I am going to group them. And then I'm going to attach them. <clears throat> all right, we're going to put the pieces all back together now. That's about right. Where's the, that nose? Oops. Get the noses in where they were. All right, one last thing. I'm not going to change the colors on any of this because I know the pieces that I want, but I have to make sure that it's going to fit the design I'm working with. So I go over here. I've got all my parts and pieces. I pre-cut mine, but I've got the little pieces I want here. I have to make sure that it's the size that I want. <clears throat> so if I take a look at my hat here, what I'm going to do is measure it, and probably two inches is probably the most I want to go, and between three and four inches across, probably three inches across, that is going to be the ideal for what I want. So let's change the size here so that its height is two inches. And you'll see it gets nice and small just like that. Now I also want to cut everything on one sheet of paper. So I have my white, my black, my green, and that's exactly the way I want to have it. But if I'm going to take all of these together like this, I'm going to change the color to green. So everything is green. Now don't panic about this. Just save it. Let's go over to make it. You'll see my groups here. I've got my white, my black, and my green. Now I'm going to place these, this one at one and one. And I think I'll place this one at four and one. 
And this one at seven and one. And you may be wondering why I'm doing it that way. Well, it's much easier to cut little pieces that are going to fit inside here. And I know exactly what I need. One, two, three, four inches across for a piece. And I can do with two inches down, maybe a little bit more. So I can use a very small piece of iron on. The same with the beards, and I, the reason I want to happen this way because these will fit on the way we want it. Now, <clears throat> the last piece is in the black, and I've lined that up so that I can have those three pieces exactly the same, and I know where they're going to be, and I have less waste of material because I don't lose that quarter inch. So just to repeat, this one I moved down to the one inch mark and over at one, so I know I can cut a piece, say, oh, four inches wide and a couple inches tall. For the white piece, I'm over at one inch, and I came down to four, so I know exactly where to place it. And same with the black pieces. I can just move it down. So I need a smaller piece for the black. And I could probably do with one and a half down and the same thing, the four inches across. And now I'm going to save a lot of material. Now let's go over here to continue. All right, I'm all I'm going to do is I'm using everyday iron on, but you can choose what you want. All I need is to cut this. I don't need any other tools. So we're pretty well ready because I have pre-cut all of mine. <clears throat> now let's take a look at everything that I have here. I have my hat press. And I've registered it and set it all up. I have set it to three bars to do that. And if you don't know how to use the hat press, there are many videos around that will do that. And uh, Angie Holden has a great one that you can view on how to set up your heat press. I have a pair of scissors here. Um, I have my hat. I have the heat pad. And, of course, I have some heat transfer tape. Now I mentioned just putting little pieces on. So what I can do when I'm cutting these is I can use this at the one-to-one. -one. So I can cut these smaller pieces. Actually, I needed a smaller piece here for the white where I had set it. And, of course, the black. And you're only using small pieces of the iron on. It works extremely well. And you don't waste a lot of material. Now I'll just move that off to the side. Now we're going to prep this hat up. I have my little ball here, so I'm going to turn it upside down. I'm going to undo my hat. I'm going to take out the material from the bottom. Place it over top of this. Get it nice and snug. Because I'm going to be using the surface here. All right, last thing I'm going to do here with this Add my hat in here. Just going to tighten it so it's nice and tight because I'm going to be ironing on this part of the hat right here. So I want that nice and smooth. Now <clears throat> we have several pieces and parts that uh, we work with, and of course, the green part is where we're going to go first. Let me just grab this off. We've got the green, and then we have the white pieces, which are the beard. And I'm just going to place things together just so you can see how this is going to work. My beard's in here. This one obviously moved. And then, of course, we have the feet. I'm going to have to recut my other one because I can see that this is a little bit too big for what I want, but I have the other two pieces in place. Okay, we have all of the pieces now. And what I like to do ahead of time is just place things in the way they should be just to make sure that everything is going to match. And I know that's a little hard to see on that surface. Got a different color here where you'll be able to see it a little better. There we go. 
I'm just going to lightly put this in place. So we're going to put this one down first. And then we're going to put our black piece in, which is stuck to the bottom here. Next in place, after that one goes on, is we'll be able to place our feet and everything in place like this. And then, of course, the last piece to go on will be the beard and then we'll fit it in that way. So it's a three layer press that we're going to be doing. And I'm just gonna heat up my hat press here and we're gonna get ready to take care of this. We have our hat already in place here. So we're gonna be able to just make sure that that is down. And I'm just gonna turn this sideways so that I can see it a little better here. So we know we want the green layer first. And I don't want anything else on there. Just peel that off. So we're gonna add our green layer. And because we have three gnomes, it's gonna be really easy to place that. Now I'm gonna stick it down, but I'm gonna use my heat transfer tape because as you can see, it wants to jump right up. Just hold this down to the surface. Next piece of tape. Actually, I'll just tape it down this way. I want to make sure it stays into place. Even that doesn't want to stick that well to that surface. You can see it get a little bubble here. And that sounds like everything is ready. Just tape that into place. Okay, now we're just going to rub this on and because it's got the curve, it's going to be really easy. I'm just going to hold it into place and it says for 15 to 30 seconds. But just like what I was doing on the other ones, you know, 15 to 30 seconds is doesn't seem that long, but I just need enough because we're going to be adding layers to this. Okay, let's just take that off and see how we've done with this. I don't have it all in. Just pull this down. There we go. Same with this one. Same with this one. Okay, I've got a piece of the hat that came off here. And I just rub them into place. I don't add any extra heat to it. And I've got that one piece that wants to not be on there. think we got any heat on it so what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of heat on that extra piece down here that's not holding okay should be enough for us to be able to peel from there and yes there is now I've got my heat transfer tape here now I mentioned that the next piece we want to put on are the feet and the hands. I'm just going to get the noses into place here and the feet up. Hands not quite in place. Okay, looking pretty good with that one. 
I'm going to add some more heat transfer tape here because I just want to make sure everything stays in place. Cut the length of it. I'm just going to put it right down the center because I just want to hold it into place and I want to make sure we get our heat transfer on this next one. So let me just grab this. Once again, we want, you know, 15 to 30 some odd seconds because we still have one more layer that we want to put into place and we don't want too much heat applied so the bottom layer gets too much. This one should be a little easier to take off. It's hot, hot, hot. Make sure everything's in there. I'm just going to smooth it down. Use my weeding tool for all kinds of different things here. Just want to make sure everything gets in there. didn't want to come into place here. There we go. All right. Last section, of course, are the beards and the tops of the hats. And of course, we want to line things up as best as possible here. That one looks pretty good here. Let's move a bit. Okay. Do have some shrinkage in there. So what I am going to do is I'm actually going to cut down the center because I want to make sure everything lines up. Good. I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to cut it down the center just because it's easier to line up the last piece because there's always a bit of shrinkage. Okay, one last little piece here. Make sure that this all fits. There we go. And of course, I want to have some of my heat transfer tape. lost the beginning of it. There it is. And being the lazy person, I'm just going to grab the length of it. I'm just going to hold it down into place, make sure that it stays where it is. This time I'm going to add a little bubble to my transfer tape so it's easier to find the beginning. We go. All right, last heat application. Now this is, like I said, is about two inches wide, and we should be able to get our heat press on the whole thing at that point. Once again, we're not moving it back and forth like an iron, but I'm simply holding it down into place for 15 to 30 seconds. Now this is a Cricut hat blank. And it works the best for what we're doing, but you can use other types of hats, uh, cotton. I have even have uh, Puma hats, of course, that uh, you can use um, that I bought at Costco. They are made from recycled plastic bottles. Those work extremely well. Okay, I'm gonna turn my heat press off. I'll just give this a second or two to cool and of course I want to do my regular thing I want to make sure I push everything into place make sure it stays you see I get a little bit of shrinkage in here for this hot it's not staying down the way I want it to Now the test. 
just it's not coming off the way I want it to. How about the one on this end? Ah, that one seems to have worked. I just don't have it on this piece. I'm going to add a little extra heat here. And I think this piece is needs a little extra heat and a little extra heat on that side, but this one seems to be fine. Okay, I'm just going to add some extra heat on these ones, and this time I am going to iron it in place. So they're not sticking the way I wanted them to. see what that will do for us. Ah, yes, that one came off. We still have problem with this one. Finally. Okay, you're going to have to let that cool. But isn't that the cutest darn little St. Patrick's Day hat? This is so fabulous. I hope you have a lot of fun with making these. Now, as I mentioned before, you don't have to use the hat press. You can use the mini, and the mini works just as well. I also mentioned other blanks you can use. I got these at Costco. These are Puma hats, but and they're made from recycled uh, plastic bottles. They're really nice, but you can put lovely designs. You can actually put designs on top of the bill as well. So have a lot of fun with this and enjoy your St. Patrick's Day.